Hey, I have a question for you. How good do you think the tool warranties are on all of these tools that you buy in Home Depot and Lowe's? The manufacturers trip over themselves to try to make theirs look better. We have limited lifetime warranties. We have three-year tool warranties. And that all sounds great when you're buying them. But what happens when the rubber hits the road and you have an actual failure and you need to send your tool or your dead battery back? What do you do? Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to navigate the muddy waters of dealing with tool warranties and how to cash in on it. And if you stick around later in the video, we'll give you some great tips on how to protect yourself so that you'll never be denied from a warranty return. So we're going to document here two different scenarios of trying to collect on the tool warranties from two different companies. And we're going to show you all of the hoops they made us jump through in order to collect on our warranties and how to make life simple for you. So the first tool that we're going to document here is DeWalt 11 inch job site Fan. brought it home we did a great tool review video which I'll put down in the video description below for you so you can check that out it was an awesome tool review video showing all of our drop tests and everything so the fan worked fine and everything for a few weeks but all of a sudden we notice hey the battery doesn't seem to be charging five amp hour battery it's in all the way we turn it on and guess what it doesn't come on pull the battery back out we test the battery and sure enough there's no battery bars but wait a minute we just pulled it off the charger and the charger was solid red it said the battery was charged houston dewalt has a problem so i pull this thing off the charger the charger says it's done but look what happens see huh and right, so there it is right there and i'll push the button there and it's only telling me one led folks which is essentially zero and then after a few minutes there you can see it goes solid which means it's pack charged so the charger is saying, hey, Jeff, I'm done. But the battery is saying, hey, Jeff, I'm not done. OK, but wait, I'm not done yet, folks, because I have another ace up my sleeve here. I have a whole arsenal of tricks to try here. The fast charger, that's my favorite one here, because maybe there was something wrong with the other charger. Let's see. Put the battery on there. He's blinking. I hear the fan come on. And sure enough, several minutes later here, solid red light, pack is charged. And we've even left it on for hours, too, just to make sure. Okay, so here's the blower now. We'll take the battery. We'll stick it in there. Guess he's in there. Good. Let's see how it does. You can hear it. It's just, yeah. It only lasted about five seconds and then it cut off. So judging by the date code, which it looks like this battery may have been built in the 23rd week of 2019. Okay, so what I did was I, I took a couple of real thin needles and stuck them in there on the battery lead so that we could make contact with them and we're going to measure the voltage here. So we're coming up with 15.84 volts. That's way low considering that it's supposed to be about 20 volts with no load on them. Remember, this was just pulled off of the charger too. Now a regular battery here will typically measure 20 to 21 volts. Okay, so there's the bad battery. Here's a battery that we know to be good and let's measure his voltage. He's at least above 18 volts here, even with uh, one bar down. Okay, so now let's see what we can do about sending back this DeWalt DCB205 5 amp hour battery. Let's see if DeWalt will take it back and replace it for us. Okay, so now there's a warranty associated with these DeWalt batteries here. And the warranty is a 90 day money back guarantee if it fails in the first 90 days, but we're beyond that point. So the only other thing we can do here is we have a free service agreement, which means they're probably going to ask me to take the battery somewhere to drop it off. Or is DeWalt gonna fight us to the death? Yeah, so I bet many of you didn't know that when you buy a DeWalt battery, part of the money that you're paying for this DeWalt battery is paying for a three-year service contract. It's like buying an extended warranty for your car. So you know how like when you go up to the registers at a store, they might say, hey, do you want the extended warranty? And you say no. Well, here you're getting it anyway, whether you like it or not, when you buy the battery. Okay, so this is kind of funny. It's kind of like that Venn diagram where you have the overlap. And the overlap is the three-year warranty overlapping with the service contract. So even though the three-year warranty doesn't cover things like cracks, the battery wearing down and all that kind of stuff, the extended warranty contract does. So I bet many of you folks out there likely have batteries that died and you don't think you're covered under the warranty but you really are if it was worn down and it's within three years of your purchase and if you can prove your purchase date hey you should be covered try it out man okay so in this case once we knew we had this dead battery all i did was i simply called dewalt here at their toll-free number which is 1-800-4-dewalt and once there and you meander your way to the warranty selection on the menus you talk to somebody from the warranty department. 
And all he basically asked was he wanted to see the date code on the, the battery. He asked me some information about the serial number here. He asked me about what date did I buy it and uh, I read him off some information off the receipt. And the man at DeWalt says, okay, we're going to mail you a new battery. And they didn't even ask me to mail them this one, which is good because that saves you money on shipping and all that. And it's a waste. Why do you want to send it back to them? What are they going to do with it? Throw it out? Okay, so that was about a 10 minute phone call and I'm holding my breath, I'm waiting and I'm wondering is the battery actually going to come? Because you know, hey, it doesn't mean nothing until it actually arrived. So about a week later, folks, look what shows up at my front door, a box from DeWalt. Let's see what's in it. And inside, what do we find? We have an invoice and it says it was shipped here from Stanley Black & Decker Incorporated in Fontana, California. And what do we find inside, folks? Ta-da! And look at this. And I noticed immediately, you guys seeing something different here? Look at this. They sent me a six amp hour battery. So I couldn't believe that DeWalt was actually kind enough to send me a six amp hour battery instead of the five amp hour battery that was under warranty. So they sent me actually the DCB206, whereas my older battery was the DCB205. So the 05 means five amp hour, the 06 means six amp hour. Now, I don't know if this is the newer batteries that has the 21700 cells. I'm, I'm not one of these people that really care into that or trying to memorize which battery has which. If somebody wants to give me a 6 amp hour battery, I'll take it. But yes, I was quite happy about that. Hey, maybe if you folks know, you can let us know in the comments which cells are in this particular battery. Okay, so the burning question, folks, is did DeWalt come through for us with the battery warranty? And the answer is yes. DeWalt did come through for us, and it was pretty quick too, and it was pretty painless. So, glad to report on that. It was pretty rare for me to have a battery failure from DeWalt. I have tons of batteries and tools from DeWalt. This was the first time I ever had to send anything back to them. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Channel Lock 200 piece mechanics tool set. Now, we had bought this at Sam's Club, and we were filming an awesome tool review video of this, and I'll put a link to that down in the description below. You gotta check out that video. We did a great, great video on that also with drop testing and everything, but we found something wrong when we were going through and filming our tool review video for this that we think we need to use the warranty now with channel lock. So as we're filming some B-roll for our tool review and we're shooting a close-up view of one of the ratchets in the set, the, one of the three ratchets, I noticed that the 3 8 inch ratchet, there was something wrong. Uh-oh, what's going on here, folks? Uh-oh, Houston. Channel lock has a problem. You will see that it is missing one of the two screws. So apparently at the factory, they never connected it. Oh, great. I'm not even going to like this. I just know it. What hoops are channel lock people going to run me through? And am I going to get a warranty coverage here? And are they even going to believe me? So channel lock, as it turns out, they have a limited lifetime warranty. So all the channel lock pliers, wrenches, snips, and drivers are warranted for material and or workmanship to the original owner. Okay, but they are not warranted as a result of normal wear and tear, damage resulting from alterations or tampering, or damage with contact with hot wires, general misuse, lack of maintenance, breakage or abuse or overload. Didn't install the screw properly. They didn't manufacture this ratchet properly. This doesn't fall under any of these weasel claws categories here. So I should be covered. Let's find out. Okay, so I get on my phone, I talk to Channel Lock, the guy says, send us an email with photos of this and we'll take a look at it. And I'm thinking, great, this is gonna go nowhere. They want me to email them a written formal email request for replacement, along with sending them photos of the ratchet with the defect. So here you can see a couple of photos I in included in the email for them that shows the missing screw in the ratchet. And so I made sure I got that done that very day and I emailed it to them. And they emailed me back later that afternoon that says, Jeff, we're sending you a brand new ratchet. And guess what folks, 48 hours later, the replacement ratchet arrived from Channel Lock by priority mail. So two days after I sent them the email, it was in my hand. And check it out folks, here is our new ratchet in there. Both of the screws are in there. And here's the old one and you can see where the missing screw is side by side with the new one. So now I have a backup ratchet, and you know what? There's really nothing wrong with this ratchet. Because even though you only have this one screw here and this one is missing, this thing is still rock solidly held together. My guess is it snaps together too, in addition to it being screwed together. So this is a perfectly functioning 
ratchet and I, leave, I just leave this in my garage as a backup. Yeah, so make sure you go back and watch that other tool review video of this that we put the link to down in the video description below. Okay, folks, so how well did the channel lock do? Did they surpass our demanding standards for honoring a tool warranty? Yes, they did. Okay, so as I promised you earlier in the video, folks, I got some tips here that'll make it easier for you to get your part replaced under warranty. Okay, so first and foremost, folks, okay, most important is make sure you have your receipt, but it really is important to have it. But there's something else you can do that I bet a lot of you don't know. So online, I've signed up to Home Depot's website. I have an account there and I have an account on Lowe's website. It doesn't cost you anything. And every time you buy something at the register, it will ask you, do you want an e-receipt or do you want you know, a print or both? And I always say both, so I get my e-receipt for the tool. But when you have that PDF file sent to your email, folks, you have a complete permanent record that nobody can challenge. And even on sites like Amazon, for example, people forget, you know, you can go back and look at your order history. I can go back a couple of years and look at stuff that I bought. So when you first contact the company on the phone and you're trying to describe to them the problem, make sure you have the item with you. Make sure that you already know the model number and the serial number of the item. If it's not on there or somewhere, then you'd better find it and have it ready to go. Now, one other thing, before you call them, make sure you have pictures of the flaws or whatever it is that you know is definitely should be covered, right? They may say to you, hey, do you have any pictures you can send us? And you can go, yeah, I got them right here. And you should be able to send them instantly to them if they provide you with an address, but that will greatly speed up the process of your warranty. But it is so important that you have 100% of all of the backup paperwork that you think you're going to need before you even call them. Make sure you have that receipt in front of you. Don't even call them until you have the receipt because they're gonna ask you what date was it bought, they may ask you for some information off of the receipt as well. Now, if you're just a regular DIY person, I suggest that all of your tool receipts and battery receipts just go into a folder somewhere. Every time you come home with something, throw it into that same folder. Don't just throw it somewhere, I'll get to it later, because you'll lose them. If you're a business, hopefully you're really smart about the way you handle all of your receipts. Well, I certainly hope you're finding this video useful so far. I mean, we did it all just for you folks. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, we have all sorts of videos here on doing remodeling projects around your house, world-class bathroom remodels, engineering disasters, tool reviews that have made us so famous. And we're also very well known for showing you all of the best tool deals. There's your reason to do it, folks. This is all for you. Well, thank you so much for tuning in this week, and we will see you on the next one.